What's up and welcome back to the Metalhead Car Show. Ford is one of the biggest car companies on the planet. Over the past 120-ish years, they've made a lot of cars. So whether if you like Ford or even into cars at all, you've seen them every single day. So today I want to talk about five Fords that you probably have never heard of. And if you're wondering, huh, I recently saw this from another YouTuber talking about BMWs. Yeah, you probably did. I'm gonna name these five cars. You let me know how many of them you knew about in the comments. Let's have some fun. Let's get right into it. Starting off with what might be the easiest, but the Ford Focus Coupe Cabriolet. So living in Canada, I've only ever seen one of these. And it was when I was in London back in 2018. I took a photo of it. The driver did not appreciate that, but I've never seen one before, so I absolutely had to. The Focus convertible went from 2006 to 2011. It received a facelift in the middle of it, and it's actually kind of neat. I'm pretty big into focuses, so whenever I talk about this thing, nobody has a clue what I'm talking about, because these were never sold in North America, and here they're just super obscure to say the least. They're kind of neat though. They had a two-piece folding metal roof, they were two-door only, they never got like the ST or the RS packages to them, but I've always found these things to be like just a really handsome car and really cool. I wish we got them at some point. Up next, the SVT Ford Ranger. So back when Ford's special vehicle team was really active, they were experimenting on a lot of the Ford models. Now, not all of them got in, such as the Expedition, the Ranger, and even the Windstar got a little bit of treatment. But the Ranger's prototypes were really cool. They made two separate prototypes, one of them being what I'm gonna call the more reasonable, sellable one, which had a 4.6 liter a V8 from the Cobra, so it made about 300 horsepower, it got dual exhaust, and it's something that, I don't know, you could actually see coming out at some point. And then there was the Lightning. The Lightning got a supercharged 5.4 liter V8 shoehorned into that car with what may have been 345s, 355s put in, and yeah, the thing's an absolute monstrosity. <laughs> But I've never heard anyone bring this thing up. I only discovered it from a YouTube rabbit hole, which got me to Motor Week's review of it back when it was new. And I think these things are super cool. I think it's a shame it never came out. So I think having a 4.6 liter, like 300-ish horsepower Ranger would have been an absolute blast and probably would have sold really well. Next up, the 2011 Shelby Mustang GT350. Now this is a car I'll bring up to car people that know more than I do, and they seem to be baffled by it. So for those who don't know, this thing came out in 2011. It had a supercharged 5 liter V8 that made 525 horsepower, and it's kind of geared to handle better than its GT500 bigger brother. I've never seen one, they're ultra rare, and I thought they were super cool right from day one. One of the things that makes this really neat, it was one of the last couple kind of like new cars that Carroll Shelby got to actually work on. And he was saying he wanted to do the GT350 for a while at that point, but he didn't want to do on a 4.6 engine because he knew Ford had a 5 liter coming out in the foreseeable future at that point. So he said he wanted to hold off until that happened so they weren't supercharging a outgoing engine and they knew they could just make a car that was just going to deliver more. And at this point, it's completely overshadowed by like the 2015 and 2021 GT350, GT350R, and along with the OG ones from the 60s. But I think these things are really cool, and I think once people start kind of cluing into them, just due to their rarity, I think these things are probably going to shoot up the value. So if you have the chance to get your hands on one, do it. Next up, the Ford Maya. Now, the Maya was a two-door mid-engine sports car Ford was working on back in the mid-1980s. It started in 1984 with the goal of having a sports car that could outdo the Corvette. So they wanted to work with Yamaha to make a new engine for this, and they ended up developing a 220-horsepower 3-liter uh, V6. Now, for 1984 and 1985, the Maya went over some facelifts and some engine changes the point where it had a more Ferrari-inspired smoother look with a twin turbo 3 liter V6 that was said to make about 300 horsepower. Now what's cool about that is having a mid-engine 300 horsepower sports car meant as when they were shooting for Corvette they were actually kind of approaching Ferrari with the 308 and 328 
and had Ford bring it out, they probably would have won. Now, unfortunately, the Ford Maya never came out, but the engine ended up actually being used in the Ford Taurus SHO in the mid-90s. So it's good to see this project just didn't go to complete waste. Last up on the list, the Ford Torino King Cobra. This Datsun looking Ford is super rare. It is very cool and it has kind of a neat story to it. In 1969, Dodge was killing it in NASCAR with the Aero Car program for their Dodge Charger Daytona and their flipped Superbird. So Ford knew they kind of had to do something to keep up with this. So they want to make a Aero Car out of the Torino. And this project got to the point of the Torino getting a Aero Car nose to it and having headlight covers for racing, so it's been way, way more aerodynamic than any of the Torinos have been to that point. But unfortunately, NASCAR pulled the plug on the Aero Car program, which meant Dodge had to stop and Ford couldn't go ahead with the project. So that means three of these exist with Ford 429 Super Cobra Jet engines, and they are unbelievably expensive. <laughs> so that's five Fords that you may have not known about, but I'd love to know. How many did you know? Let me know in the comments. And if there's any manufacturers you'd like me to do this with, let me know, I would love to hear it. Thank you all so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the scene. I'm posting now Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and I'll see you later.